Call is now being recorded. Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to the June cohort weekly presentations. Today we'll be witnessing once again your ticket stations. I hope you guys are ready and just ready to redeem yourselves from last week, basically. I'm excited. Um, Yolo, the floor is yours. Okay, let me just uh, share my screen. Okay. I'm just going to like ask you to join. I'm going to join with my PC. All right. No, no I'm going to cancel this. Yeah. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yologa Znokancho, and I am representing our team, which comprises of myself, Jimin, uh, Piwogushe, uh, Ayub, and Bongani. So we call our system the favorite ticket station. So I will start now presenting the system to you. This is our landing page. Uh, which comprises of what we are and what we do. This is the about section. And here we just have a brief introduction about ourselves and what we do. Um, and then here, these are, the, these are the only two types of tickets that you can get from our website. And here you can send to us any messages and or any queries that you might have or subscribe to our newsletter so now i will be now showing you how the login works can everyone see my screen just to as confirmation yes we can okay so here this is the login page and from here i'm just going to use my own details to log in Oops, I forgot to just um, put a character there. And this page takes us straight to our events page. So here we have a couple of events that we have logged. Um, just that the page is a little slow in loading. But as you can see, these are our events. So right now, um, I want to go to a science fair. So I'm just going to search a science fair.
oh, and I realized I do have one um, event that I can go to, which is the science exhibition. Buying my ticket. Now I'm going to put in my details. Put in my age. Standard ticket. Just and then I'm going to select um, my science exhibition event. And then I'm going to submit. Then it takes me straight back to this page. Should I want to be logging another event? So let us just say I want a dance event. So I have realized I've got two dance events that I could go to. So let me just pick this one. Again. Let's say this one is for my sister. I'm going to select VIP in this case, and I'm going to put in her email. And then she picked the dance workshop. Is it the dance workshop? Then it's submitted again. So that is what we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. However, I do have to note that um, when it comes to logging of the tickets, uh, the functionality does not work well. We have, however, tried to implement it in the code. Thank you very much for your time and for listening. I will now be logging out back to our homepage. Okay, can you also check if it's responsive for us, please? Okay. There we go. Our code is responsive. Um, just, uh, just play along with the toggle bar, let's see, for different devices how it looks. Yeah, I guess it was for this that you want to see. So you do you see on next to elements, right? On the left hand side of elements, the little block that you see there. The elements. Which elements where? So on the this box that you see on top top is elements, console and sources on top. This yeah. one. That one, yeah. Just press on that part. And keep okay. playing with it. Let's see. Just press it again. Okay, so yeah, it's not responsive, guys. Okay, this page. Okay. <sighs> Let me just right. uh, let's check out the events. Um okay. Just wanna show you the events there. Just checking your responsiveness for the events. Now, don't really want to waste time, just quickly, just quickly. Okay, there we go for the events. Okay, yeah, now we see that it's really not responsive as I thought it was. Okay, okay, cool. Thank you. All right, then let's see the code. Okay. Okay, quickly just run us through your JavaScript and where you used OOP. 
you don't have to go into extreme depth, but just show us how you incorporated OLP into your project. So um, I used inheritance uh, when it comes to uh, inheriting the tickets from the event class. And let me just, let me just give me just one sec so I can be able to explain. I'm gonna get a little confused. It's just to to ensure that I don't get confused. Sorry. Um, just a second. Okay, cool. Open that for you. All right. So um, we have JavaScript. We have written our code here in the index.js page. So here we go. So um, we created an event class uh, for the displaying of the events. And then after that, we made the ticket class to inherit from event. And then, as I said there, this is the, these were contents for the functionality of reducing the tickets, uh, if it does not work properly right now. Um, so there we go. And then this is just how it works. And then this is the search button. This is the code to update the tickets. <sighs> and Where then is here, the that you were talking about? From here, this class extends this event class. Okay. I placed right. it in one in one in one um, file. Okay, so you only this is how I this is essentially how I'm displaying everything. Okay, because I see a lot of exposed data out there. Did you guys try using encapsulation to protect your some of your information, for example? Mm, no, like, those part. like, do you see those tickets and everything? How everything is just exposed. And there's just a lot of code happening there. This, this is for creation why your application is a bit slow as well, because everything is just out like this. So did you guys only use inheritance, basically, is what I'm asking? We used inheritance, and in, I think in this class page. Login. But yeah, it's not really because even here we I don't think we did a little bit. Okay. Okay, here. Okay. Okay, cool. Um yeah, yeah, basically, basically. Not even gonna beat around the bush about that one. Um so yes. Can you quickly explain the just, checkout page? Um so the checkout is here. Oh, yeah, let me show you. So as I said here, essentially, we we're supposed to be doing here. This is where the tickets are supposed to be reduced and then um edit so yeah this is this is this is the code for that and then this is the update methods for that if it's not working out at the moment sorry i don't know what just happened there but yeah this is this is how everything is looking there are a couple of pages but they're not really relevant um, in terms of, it's only the index page and some main.js and some login.js pages. Okay. And that is all the JavaScript that I was using. 
All right, good job, guys. Well done. All right. Um, I, I must say, though, that uh, it's quite strange that this thing is still functioning slowly, even though um, it doesn't contain, it's not that big of a file anymore. <sighs> All right. But you guys did your best. Well done. Um, I like the front end. It's very professional. It looks like a ticket station, right? I look like I want to book something and go see. Who's that guy? I forgot what his name is. Or the music British. Soul child. Yeah, music soul child. Yeah. Or John Legend. I would book a ticket. I'm not going to lie. Good job on the front end. And then because this was mostly an OOP project and you guys only used inheritance, but good attempt on using inheritance. Um, I would still have to go look at the code a bit more. And then okay. it's it's responsive in some pages I see, but other pages are not responsive. So maybe you guys can just improve on that, the responsiveness. And also make sure that the checkout works. Because the whole point, guys, is so that the checkout works. It's a ticket station, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. So please go back and go work on that yes. checkout page. Make sure that it works before you guys deploy and show this work to recruiters. Okay. Because it is a good project. You guys just need to put in a little bit more effort in just making it functional. That's it. Literally, that's it. And I know it's not easy. But I feel like you guys, you give up when you are almost at the finish line. That's the only yeah. problem I have. You guys gave up when you were almost at the finish line. But well done on redeeming yourself. I know you guys will go back and just improve on that. And yeah, then we'll definitely improve on that checkout. Definitely improve on that. Yeah. So until I see that improved version, I will just give you guys a 70%. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you so much for your time and your um ears. Yeah. Thank you, Yolo. You have great pre presentation skills, by the way. You speak very well. So I'm surprised why you didn't want to speak before. Speak no, I did want to speak. I just had some issues with my connection. Mm, okay. Well done, guys. Um, Piwa, what is the most important thing you learned from this project? Um, I learned, first of all, teamwork, working as a team. And second of all, I learned um, OOP in depth. Mm. Yeah, although it's a bit of like a work in progress, but yeah. Um, and also I learned how to actually be flexible in terms of working on the big end as well. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. I like that you mentioned that teamwork is something that you learned and which is something we want you guys to learn. So it's good that you are learning that. And you guys should be proud of yourselves regardless. Yolo, what did you learn from this project? Can I, can I just tell you what the challenge is? The challenge is understanding um, the, the great amount of um, res like, like things that JavaScript offers you and learning how to use them and mm. all at the same time and working with the front end. You know, JavaScript is powerful, but it's, it's, it's hard for me to get around the syntax even just to use inheritance, it was for me to try, try and, and figure out um, the structure of how you structure things. And I was not even sure about many things like, are you allowed, can you have more than one constructor? Like the whole learning of the different syntax of, of, of JavaScript and at the same time working with the front end, ensuring that all the little pieces are in one place such that the project is presentable to people. It's also a bit of a challenge and deciding whether are you going to actually use um, 
uh, the JavaScript to create your HTML, or are you gonna use the JavaScript itself and then embed the HTML onto the page? And then that was one particular decision that I think that it was an important decision to make because um, with when it comes to objects, you're going to need some of the values um, that you, some of, some of them are gonna change, some of them are gonna need a, a bit of updates and taking care of those little details with, um, with JavaScript and bearing in mind that you are using classes and you are using objects, I can say for me it's 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 still like a work in progress. Um, I'm not not I'm not really proud of myself in terms of uh, that, in terms of back end, in terms of making sure that you you we are using prototypes. I've I wanted to use prototypes, but I haven't really gotten to that level. So. Yeah, I would say that that uh, it's a bit, it's, it's a challenge. It's a, I'm working, I'm working on it, and mm. yeah, I'm still working on it. Okay, no, guys, you did do well. You did. Don't don't be too hard on yourselves as well, because remember, guys, this is if I don't know Yolo, if this is your first time like working with JavaScript, or did you work with no, certain no. languages in your degree, no. right? No, this is my first time working with JavaScript in this regard. Like, I didn't have to use it in depth before. It was just moving pieces on the front end. But it wasn't, like, literally coding things and mm -hmm. making sure that information is captured properly, updating that information, just using CRUD, like CRUD with, mm -hmm. with JavaScript. It's, yeah. It's and JavaScript is challenging, guys. So because it was mainly your first time working with it, and look at the work that you guys still produced, regardless of how difficult it was. Now, I would say, go back. Look at what you are missing or what you still need to learn, right? Yes. So don't yes. just throw away this project because now you guys got a grade and it's done. You can go back, use the same code, try to incorporate more of the OOP into the same code and say, this is what I did. This is the features I added to this project, even though it was a group project. Now you yeah. are going to add your own features. And then while you're doing that, you'll be learning JavaScript in depth or OOP more in depth. Yeah. Okay. Just, yeah. just as a question. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, with the user authentication and the registration, I just wanted to find out from you, like, is there any advice in how I can incorporate those classes and make them to work? together with my events and my tickets class. I mean, every user will book a ticket, but at the at this present moment with JavaScript, I'm not really sure how do I actually um, get to a point of where I'm actually like incorporating that user authentication part together with the events and the tickets. Okay, so in terms of authentication, right, and validation in terms of your forms, for example, we are still going to get to the real part where now people can import information, their email, their username, and it's being stored in a local storage, right? So what you guys are doing now is basically just a dummy way of validating things, if I can put okay. it like that. Mm. So you will get to the part. Don't stress too much about validation and authentication this was just to show you how it works but you guys will experience that part like right now my cohort is doing node.js which is the back end and then this is where that will come in as well you know what i mean okay. so yeah don't stress too much about that just try to grasp the basics and the fundamentals and then you'll be okay I know JavaScript is challenging, guys. I remember telling you guys in the beginning that this is not going to be easy at all. But yeah. you guys can still be proud of yourselves because you still produced a good work. Right? Yeah. yeah. Don't be too hard on yourselves as well. So please just make those improvements and then also send me the link to the project so I can just have a look. Your GitHub repo. So I can have a okay, look. Okay, yeah. No problem. Yeah. Send you the all right, cool, guys. So since that's done, I'm just going to introduce you guys to the next level that you guys will be working on. Mm -hmm. All right. You can just I'm just going to start sharing my screen. Thank you so yeah. much.
All right, guys. So let me just quickly locate. You guys had just done Ticket Station, which was probably level four. Guys, can you see how fast this boot camp is moving? There's no way yeah. that you can yeah. do everything, especially in such a short time. That's why I'm saying it's important that you guys go back and mm -hmm. remember to incorporate these things again so that you solidify what you are learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to introduce you guys to my favorite, my favorite ever friend in framework, which is React. You guys will be doing React and Redux. React is a front-end framework that you guys will be working with to incorporate in your projects. It's a really nice framework that you guys can use. I personally enjoy it a lot. Um, what I would say about React is don't try to focus too much on why this, this, why this thing does this. Try to focus on understanding um, how it works basically so for example with react we have jsx which is just like writing your html elements inside of a javascript file which is pretty cool if you ask me and then you being able to render those html elements onto your browser you need a compiler all right and the first things first that we're going to introduce you to is why do people use React? Why are why is React so famous and why are people um, demanding so much jobs out of React? It's a very famous framework that you guys will enjoy, I hope. So there's a nice video that's just gonna introduce you to this gorgeous framework. We have a free code camp video, it's two hours long. I suggest that you guys give yourselves enough time to go through this video maybe give yourself two, a day or two where you go through this video twice and you understand what it's about because if you go through the whole video everything else here that follows will make sense it will make more sense to you because he speaks on he speaks on everything that you need to know like creating your react app what the virtual dom is an introduction to jsx which is just your javascript extension um, your JavaScript modules, importing and exporting modules, why it's important, your components. So basically, components is like your code that you write and you can reuse over and over again in your program instead of you having to write the same code again, right? So whenever you guys see, for example, on, let's say, TikTok, no, let's say YouTube, and you see a thumbnail, you see the name of the YouTuber, you see the description of the video. Have you ever asked yourself, why is it that it appears so many times? Like when someone posts a new video, for example, it will give you the same thumbnail. I mean, the same structure or component. They are using components, which is the power of components. The person, so the developer doesn't have to go back that every time YOLO posts a new YouTube video, he doesn't have to go and manually create that component, but it's already done, right? And that is the power of JavaScript and React. We also introduce state and state management, styling your components using CSS, properties or props, as they call them, and rendering your elements. Okay, and then we have an individual capstone. You guys will have two weeks, three weeks, sorry, for this entire course which is level five. Okay, so the individual assignment is to create a simple static component. This is the first one. This is not a capstone, by the way. This is just a, an assignment just to get you started and fired up with React. You will create this beautiful Instagram looking like profile. Whatever you want to do, you can just use your creativity with this one. Use components for this. And then for week two, we introduce your advanced components, concept, routing. Routing is just a way of you moving from page to page. That's how we do it in React. So it's not, it's not just you having one single page application and then just scrolling down and you have everything in one page. No, React has works with different pages. So we think of the pages as your component. 
okay and then we use routing to be able to navigate to those pages and then we have different use effect hooks conditional rendering lists and keys forms and inputs see yolo now you'll be introduced to react and forms and form validation as well and then the routing and navigation and then of course you guys will have your individual project which is this is the important capstone that you have to pay attention to so you will be required to build a bakery website so this one we give you a nice step by step on what you need to do so you have to create a multi-page website right so this is where routing will come in where your local bakery uses what you've learned so far about react and react router you set up your project using create react app i would advise you guys to please use create react app to create all your applications because that is the standard that we have in the boot camp i know people who use another form which is Vite, and i don't know if it's easier for you to use Vite, do that but I would advise you to use Create React App because it's the universal way of doing it and there's more documentation on using it this way or creating React Apps this way. Step number two, you will create your pages. So your home page, your About Us page, and your menu page. Your menu page is just basically where you'll be showing us all the different um, bakery website or I mean pastries that you have on your, your bakery website. So just note that each page is a component. So home page will be a component. About page will be a component. Menu page will also be a component. Okay. Step number three, you're setting up your router. So this is basically just the navigation from page to page. They explain to you nicely over here. And then for navigation as well, almost the same thing. And then style your project as well. CSS is difficult because it requires a lot of patience and a lot of people don't have patience for css that's what i've noticed but yeah you can use bootstrap if you really don't want to be wasting your time and styling things for hours and hours or use chat gpt also ask him hey i have this code so you you copy all your your code for example let's say you have your home page copy all the code in your home page component paste it into chat gpt and ask him hey can you please style this for me in css and then he he can do it then you just copy the css and you save a lot of time trust me then step number six you test your site make sure that the navigation works and that you have access to each page and also make sure that you don't have any bugs solve the bugs as well before deploying and yeah you guys will be presenting on that as well because you have week one week two after two weeks so let me just make sure of the date so today the 29th the fifth will be week one and then the 12th so on the 12th of september you guys will be presenting your first uh project but only the pay project please so only your pay project, which is the next one I'm going to explain. So your come again. Hmm? Uh, so on the 15th, we are presenting the pay. Sorry, the 15th. No, the 12th of September. Okay, the 12th of September, it's the pay, right? Mm -hmm. And get it, the next week, it's the 5th of September, it'll be week one. Mm -hmm. You're not presenting anything. Mm -hmm. And then the 12th of September will be the second week, which is mm -hmm. when this one will be due, the recipe. So 12th okay. September is the recipe website, which is the one you, you're making with your pay, you, your partner. All right. Yeah. Okay. And then the following week, which will be the 19th, will be when the next one is due, which is the the apple store so the 19th of september is your second pair capstone the apple store you'll be presenting that so you only have one week for that one 
I hope I'm clear. Did you get the dates, um, Yolo? And Piwo? Yeah, I, I got the dates. I got right. the dates. It's just one, the 12 is the one project, which is the pair. Then next one is the apple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly explain the recipe. So your recipe book web application, same, almost the same concept as the bakery, if I'm being honest. It's the same concept. The only difference with this one is you'll be adding state management and Redux as well, All right? So you have your recipe page, your recipe details, state management, and also routing. So it's pretty much the same as your individual capstone. So I'd advise you guys start with the pay the pay project because it's the most important. Start with the pay project, end with the individual. Because either way, what you're doing on your pay project is what you're going to be doing on your individual. But you just added state to the to the pay project. All right. And then I'm just going to move to the group project for week three which is Redux. So for this one, this is a very, very big project, guys. This is a cloning. You'll be cloning the Apple Store um, shopping cart, if that makes sense. I'm just going to open it up so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I personally enjoyed this project a lot. It, it challenges you to think. It challenges you to solve problems. Because you will get a lot of bugs, trust me. You will get a lot of bugs that you will have to solve going forward. Um, I don't know why it's taking so long. Yeah, and then, Yolo, please just remind me that I need to pay you guys after this meeting. I should do that very, very soon, actually. So you guys will be working in groups of two. Yeah. Are you guys still there? Yes, yes, they will. I just muted myself, uh, but I'm uh, I'm here. Okay. All right. So for the Apple Store, our very very big project. This is what you guys need to build, right? We give you like an inspiration, but you have to give us the exact same project back. So this is on Figma right now. And you guys have to make sure that your project looks exactly the same. I'm going to first start with this part. Okay. All right. So the home page will look something like this. You have a search button and it has to be functional. So when I search Apple Watch, it needs to give me just Apple Watch and its image and everything rendered. If I search iPhone, it has to give me all these iPhones that are appearing here on the home page. Okay, and make sure you have a sidebar. Remember in React now, we're working with components. So the sidebar that you see here is a component by itself. The search, the search bar over here is also a component. And then let's say this Apple Watch where you have the image, the title, the description, and the price of the Apple Watch. This is a component by itself. It's being rendered more than once basically but it's been reused over and over in this home page okay then on the side you have a bag that you will whenever you add to cart your pro your products will appear here and then you can just press here and view your bag okay all right so whenever you press on an item for for example you press on the apple watch this page should appear this page over here and this this is everything that you have as you can see we still have the same sidebar we still have the same bag so it means these components are being rendered over and over again right so you are reusing this component in this page as well again the power of react okay the next step uh, the next page is when you are now in your bag and you're checking your bag items. This is where your images, I mean, your products will appear with the, the ratings and the price and the amount or the quantity of the product that you added to the cart. And then this should give us in the bag a bag total 
of how much your items are and also rendering every item that you added to your cart. And then now you can check out. So when you go to check out, um, the page that will appear is basically an order summary. An order summary over here that has all the totals, the shipping cost, the estimated GST and the gift card. And you'll be able to place your order. We also have a component here where you have your shipping address, your payment method, and keep make note that you have your products being added here again. So it means you are reusing a component here again. Okay. And also when you press on this shipping address and you change it, it's going to lead you to the next page, which is this one, where you can update the, the shipping address of the person and their names. And whatever you input into this part where you add the address should reflect back to this page. So if I added PO and I added her address and where she stays, it should reflect back here. All right. So remember, you can use local storage for that or dummy JSON where your information is being stored and reflected or being rendered back onto this page. Then lastly, it's just the add cart, which is the same concept as your shipping address. Here now you just add in the card your card details and your CVV and you're placing your, your order. Then after that, you can go an extra step where after placing your order, there's an extra page that says order successful, or maybe you can just have an, a prompt alert that will tell the user that the order was successful and maybe the total of the order was this and the delivery will be made two to three days, just as a, a nugget or something extra. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions? I don't have questions, but ooh, this is a lot. It, it is. is a lot. It is. This one, if you guys cried about that other one, then yeah. No, the the the, the tears for the old the, the last one is the fact that sometimes when you're working in a group mm. and uh, somebody has to do something, that whole um Okay, especially when you think about back end, I don't think that uh, we have the best of skills. We still very, I'm still very weak in working with a group when it comes to back end, mm. because it's it's like okay, you put a piece like this, I, I don't agree with that piece, and then I get rid of it. I have to create recreate the whole thing because sometimes it's like that, or I do something and then the other person is like, this is not functioning the way that it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm I'm gonna keep this. I'd rather do that. Mm -hmm. So I would think I I feel like for the individual ones, um, you only have yourself. So I feel like mm -hmm. that's much more better. <laughs> okay, guys, I just realized something. You guys were on level four, ne? Yes. So I forgot that you guys have to do this part. Yeah, we have to do the kit. Um, mm. I just remembered. Okay, so scratch everything I said, guys. This is the part you're supposed to first do before we go to React. You guys need to do this part. Because this part is important, mainly because for you to do the React part, you guys will be working together so you need to be working on different branches and collaborating with branches. So the only way you can do that is if you first go through this particular um, course. Oh, so sorry, guys. It's been a oh, I'm sorry. We, we're also very sorry. We didn't remind you. Um, mm, it's okay. You. Okay. All right. So in terms of get um this is just version control and a way for you to keep track of your changes and being able to revert your changes for example and collaborate with other people and just taking accountability of okay yolo pushed this code we want to know who did this we want to know what broke the code and we always want to revert back our changes if something like that happens right and that is the power of git um, you'll just be introduced to it nicely. I don't, I'm not going to go in depth about Git and GitHub. You guys have worked with GitHub before. Um, installing Git, your Git repos, your commits. Um, your commits are basically just you stashing or committing your changes to Git. And then Git revert is you reverting your changes. So, for example, let's say Yolo pushed her code. 
and then broke the whole application. Now we want to undo that. So we're just going to revert YOLO's changes by using a, a particular number or log ID number. And then you just um, just git revert that. Um, we have your git ignore file, your branches, git and GitHub again, your personal access tokens, forking, forking, which is just like cloning someone else's um, git repo. And then you have your group capstone. Okay, let me just go to the group capstone. So luckily for this one as well, you don't have an individual. Let me just double check. Yeah, you don't have an individual for this one. So the project will be your coding quiz, an interactive coding quiz. And then you'll be tasked with creating a responsive multiple choice quiz application. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with what a quiz or multiple choice questions are. And then you can ask a maximum of 10 questions. Don't make it too long. And these should be code 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 related questions. So maybe you can ask about JavaScript or OOP, could be anything. Just use your creativity. But the user scores should be displayed at the end of the quiz. And if the user failed the quiz, for example, and got five out of ten, they should be prompted to try again. Yeah. And then make sure that you style it, use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And also, YOLO, here's your chance again where you can implement one of the OOP yeah. principles if you can. Yeah, see. That would be great. So we gave you guys the requirements. Just take a look at them, read through them, see what is expected of you. This will make the project so much clearer for you and to avoid confusion. We will be asking you guys to show us your Git, your GitHub, where we can see that Pure created this branch you guys created this branch together and you merged your your code together because this is a git and github <coughs> level so we want to see you guys using that so please be mindful of that so you must you must create one repo collaborate on it and then work on different branches then whenever you're done pushing your code make sure that you can merge your code and avoid merge conflicts as well yeah I hope that I hope that I was clear on that one. No confusions. Any questions? No questions. No, I understand. Sorry, Yolo. All right, guys, um, if there's no questions at all, I will end the meeting here. Thank you so much for coming, guys. And well done on your project. I wish you all the best with Git and GitHub. This one will not be too difficult. This one, yeah, this one won't be too difficult for you guys. Just make sure that you understand what is required of you in the project. I will see you guys next week. Just to, let me just see. So you guys have one week for this one. So you have one okay. week and you'll be presenting next week, just so I'm clear and I avoid confusion. I'm sorry, guys, that I kind of confused you in the beginning. This is the GitHub one, Yeah, right? the Git and GitHub. So you have one week for it. So on the 5th of September, you'll be presenting. All right, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye, Debu. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.